Yeah, this is Robert Scovel. We're here with Lincoln Park for the first time. Uh, I usually don't inter interview uh, rock and roll stars, which is really great. And we're here with Harmon, who makes a, a wide variety of uh, speaker and audio uh, brands from JBL to a a Martin Levinson. Um, I love them. And they're doing a new partnership with their Infinity brand with uh, Lincoln Park and, and JBL, right? Let's start with you, with Infinity. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, too many brands here, man. <laughs> so, uh, as you know, we're a house of brands. We've got 18, 19 different brands in the portfolio, but we have one very special one, which is Infinity. So this partnership really is Lincoln Park and the Infinity brand. Um, and it's really, you know, it's, it's, it's transformative in the sense that it's a product development partnership. We're going to be co-developing some products together. Um, it's also a partnership about passion points. Uh, you know a little bit about what the band and some of their passion points are around disaster relief. So that's one area where we're getting together on some things, but also on a bigger issue, which is this notion of sound degradation and what can be done. So what we want to do is shine a little bit of a spotlight on that as an issue. Um, and then there are some technologies that we're developing, quite frankly, to help address that. And then there are going to be some things that we'll do collaboratively around that to... Uh, well, let, let's kick it off about sound degradation. You know, you know, here we got Lincoln right. Park on a little tiny speaker right. being played. Spotify? Spotify, uh -huh. right? Is this yeah. how you want your fans to listen to your music? I mean, that's part of the, I guess that's part of the, dis the big discussion, you know. Um, this isn't like a, a, a one kind of, like a one product kind of thing. Um, and it's not a sponsorship. It's, it's, you know, when we first started talking, we, there was no product to talk about yet. There wasn't anything to talk about. We sat down and we said, well, what are our philosophies? What things are important to, to harm and what's important to us? And what should we make? What should we make that's going to make a difference and going to kind of express those things and be exciting and fun to make? So, um, and, and as you, you pointed out, you know, sound degradation is actually surfaced as something that, um, that everybody feels very strongly about. I think for us, um, over time, like as we've gotten older, I think we've maybe it's maturity, maybe it's just um, being aware of all of the attention to detail that goes into making a song from 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 you know being in the studio. Um, you just realize that a lot of those those little delicate um, uh, those those choices you make get lost when you start to you know when you start. Playing it on, playing it on the phone, playing it on iPad, or, or even Perfect streaming, time. even streaming from YouTube or whatever, you know. You know, I, I had the pleasure of visiting the engineering team at Harmon, and they showed me uh, that they're using 3D printing to test different kinds yes. of uh, waveguides, where they're because, you know, if you throw audio through different uh, kinds of shapes and stuff, you change audio. Mm -hmm. And then they showed me the speaker drivers themselves, and, and there's a lot of engineering that goes into that, the engine, they call it, that drives the air that we all listen to. And then they showed me the uh, compression technology and, and how much they can change it. And that's where I, yeah. in the press conference, I was asking you, are you actually playing with the, uh, the compression technology? Because you can really customize the compression technology to, to change the sound and do a lot of things. Are, are you sitting down with the engineers like that yeah. at that level and thinking through speaker design that way? It's been, it's been, yeah, the design's been a part of the, the process. Like I know when we sat down with the design, we sat down with the design team a number of times and had sometimes some really fun, crazy, like creative conversations and sometimes some difficult conversations yeah. where we butted heads about design. Uh, it was almost like form versus function where yeah. as you were saying, like certain there are certain limitations to what you can do in, a, in, in, in various sizes and shapes. And we said, but we love this shape or we love this execution. And they said, well, look, here's why it won't sound as good as what you want it to sound. So I think that's, for us, those are you know, eye-opening experiences. That's why we're excited to work with these guys because you know, the level of expertise is so high. And the, the amount of, to be honest, they can do so many things, you know, and we can kind of realize a lot of these like um, creative ideas that that we collaboratively have. What's it like to be in the studio and listen to uh, your music being played back on, you know, studio monitors? I mean, we, we, yeah. we, we here at uh, Harmon, we listen to some hundred forty uh, was it a hundred thousand dollar pair of speakers, something like that, hundred seventy thousand dollars audio setup you know it was like yeah <laughs> what's it like to listen to your music played back at a high bit rate and through really high-end gear and then what does the uh, normal uh, person on the street need to understand that they're missing and, and you know 
what what's the emotion because music is about emotion transference right yeah exactly like the the emotion from the artist transferring to the listener um you know when we listen to our music in the studio and and after being away from the studio for a little while and now we're back and we've been back in the studio for a little while uh, for the past few months and it's so exciting to to listen to stuff on high quality speakers with some of the stuff's even been recorded on tape because we've been experimenting with the difference between recording straight into a computer, which is a very high sample rate, but it's also, you know, it's not the same and you don't have that same warmth. Um, I, we, a few albums back, we started working with Rick Rubin and um, we'd go to his house. He had, a, he had a listening room where he'd sit down and we'd all listen to music together. And I was so inspired by that. I, when I, I, I put one in my house. I wanted to have a room with really high quality speakers to listen to music. And it's such a different experience. Like when you're just listening to music in the background, you know, on your phone or running or in your car. And then when you actually sit there and listen on those speakers, there's definitely something, there's an emotion that you get from it. I was listening to, uh, I think it was old uh, Stevie Wonder records, like Songs in the Key of Life. And when I first started playing, I said, there's got to be something wrong with my speakers. What's, there's a hissing sound like before the song started. And I realized that that's the sound of the tape rolling. And that's something you would never hear or pick up, you know, when the, as the sound has been compressed more and more. And I think that, you know, as we've, if technology has evolved, there's been an inverse relationship between convenience and the quality of sound. And there's no longer the need to, you can have both now. And that's why we're really excited to have a product that can bring both, it's portable, people can carry it around and then can also plug it in and listen to you know sound in the in the way it was intended, which is it, until you do it, you don't realize how much you've been missing. Yeah. You guys are, have been in the technology for a while, right? And you you've been pretty outspoken about the advantage of technology of bringing music to the fans. Mm -hmm. What's what's been happening uh, because of Spotify and the uh, streaming services, and are those helping or hurting the sound? And are you thinking it, of taking G, uh, Harmon? to those services and saying, hey, maybe there's something else we can even do to make the sound quality better for the, the Infinity speakers that you're going to be delivering on. I, I think, I mean, yeah, I'll let you answer yeah. first. I mean, I mean, you know as, as well as anyone what it's done. It's really degraded the, the quality of sound just because of the level that needs to be compressed. So whether it's an MP3 file or something that's streaming, the way these guys engineered that, that's not what you're hearing. The good news is, that, so that's an unintended consequence of the ability to have music on the, go, on the go and portable and where I want it, when I want it. I mean, that's a real, that's a real consumer trend and that's not going to go away. So now the unintended consequence of that is what you're listening to. What do we do about it? And this is some of what we're going to be talking about in the documentary, but there are things that we can do. So we're, we're, we're co-producing a documentary. Uh, it's called The Distortion of Sound. And what we're trying to do is put a spotlight on the issue of sound de degra degradation why it happens, how it happens, what's been happening over the last 10, 15 years, et cetera. But more importantly, where, what can we do about it? Um, and you know, from a Harmon perspective, there are a lot of things that we can do it because this is what we do. It's the science of sound, right? So uh, just here at CES this week, we launch and introduce a new proprietary technology called Signal Doctor, which is basically an algorithm that really, you know, the best way to, to describe it is it restores the fidelity back to the music. Uh, and it is patented, and it's not just a, a gimmick. It's not something that just you know boosts the bass or something like that. It really does try to restore the music the way it was intended to be heard. So you know, as a company, we're we're working on things like that. And those technologies, as we go back to product development with Lincoln Park, that technology will live on some of the products that we develop together. So the Infinity One, for example, you know, it's very easy for us to put that kind of a DSP technology into those types of uh, products. So. That's you know that's what I would say about that. And one, I just say one, just like a like a, a, an analogy that kind of came to me as we're talking. I think everybody, I think most people are more familiar with um, how compression affects like an image. You know, like you get a you get a low quality JPEG. Let's say your dad's old photos that he took and then imported on the technology that was the the highest you know quality then and you look at it now and you go god there's all this weird these weird colors on it you know that 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 stuff that happens in the compression on a on an image happens in music too and that's the thing that if that's the only thing you've ever seen or heard then you kind of don't know what it could be and then once you see something that's high resolution then you realize that what you were missing 
Well, I, I'm getting notified that you guys have a thousand people out here who want to hear this now. <laughs> so, so I'm looking forward to the concert. Thank you so much for uh, spending you. some time with me, and thanks for uh, doing what you guys do, and thanks for uh, improving my sp my speaker sound systems too. So thank you very much. So thank you uh, very much. We're uh, gonna go watch some Lincoln Park.